Well, hello, everybody. Um, I'd say good afternoon, but of course, it could be any time of the day uh, where you're watching this webinar. Uh, so I'll just say hello. Welcome along. Um, welcome to Martin Audio's series of webinar training. My name is Robin Dibble. I'm a product support engineer with Martin Audio. So my day job um, is system design for installations. I spend a lot of time using both Ease Focus and full version um, of Ease 4.4 to design and systems for our customers uh, around the world and for our distributors. Uh, and also with my colleagues, um, Simon and Ben in the product support department, uh, we also build and develop uh, training, webinars, all that kind of stuff um, for all of our products and applications around the world. So without further ado, let's go on and talk about what we are here for today. And that's using uh, AFMG's Ease Focus software with Martin Audio's loudspeaker products. Now, this webinar uh, is being recorded as we go through it. Uh, so we will send links out to all of you afterwards so that you've got links back to recordings of the presentation for future reference. So these are the topics we're going to be looking at today within Ease Focus. Um, we're going to guide you through what it is, how it does it, and why it's useful for you. Ease Focus is completely free software. Um, it's uh, downloaded from the AFMG website. The link is here. Um, and it enables you to map the performance of loudspeakers within a space. Now, it works on direct sound only, so no room acoustics are taken into consideration. But it does allow you to look at loudspeaker layouts, optimize them, uh, and to be sure that you're going to get the right sound pressure level in the room before you even raise a drill to a wall and mount a loudspeaker. Predictions of the performance are very useful, not only because it allows you to be sure that your design is right before you get to site, but it also um, gives us the opportunity to show our customers what they're going to get uh, in an easy to understand format so they understand that the solution that we're presenting to them is the right one. It's equally useful for both our full range or mid high boxes and our subwoofers. And we can plot right the way through, through the frequency range uh, and look at individual locations and individual seat frequency responses within a room. Once you've successfully installed Ease, downloaded and installed the software, uh, you then need to download our uh, Ease GLL files. Um, GLLs are the, uh, uh, the individual files that give you all the data for each loudspeaker from our website. You'll find that under the support tab, uh, under measurement data, and in there you'll see uh, files for each of the different ranges which we support within Ease Focus. Those being Adorn, CDD, Blackline X, Blackline X Powered, the XD series, and all of our SX series subwoofers. Something to note is that uh, sadly, Ease Focus is not able to model the output of our optimized arrays. So neither the MLA range nor the Wavefront Precision range are compatible with Ease Focus. To model those currently in three dimensions, you will need to uh, invest in the full Ease 4.4 software package. Alternatively, for certain projects, we can help you out in the product support group in the UK with that. So when you launch Ease Focus, first thing you need to do is import the system definition files, the GLLs, so that you can um, uh, easily insert them into your projects as you go through. So to do that, we go to the file tab at the top of the screen and we go to import system definitions, as you can see on the right hand side. From there, you navigate to wherever you've downloaded and saved our GLL files to. They then become part of the library within Ease Focus and are easily selected and loudspeakers dropped into your workspace. So this is a bit of a walkthrough, really. It's aimed to give you a grounding and an understanding of what Ease Focus is, how to use it, uh, and what it can do for you. 
There is in-depth help information within EaseFocus by using uh, the help menu or by pressing F1 at any point during use of the software. First thing we need to look at is our options menu. We get to the options menu by pressing either the F9 key or going again to the file tab and clicking on options. This menu then allows you to access uh, different sets of parameters within EaseFocus and set them up to suit yourself. It starts with the view menu and this selects what items you have in your main display screen. So for example, whether you want marker rulers to give you scale on the side of your um, operating windows, um, where you want your X, Y axis to start, all that kind of stuff. As you get more familiar with the software, this will give you um, more of an insight into exactly how you want to use the software and what features you want to have readily accessible within your workspace. Next in the options menu is grid and snap. So again, we're looking at the appearance of the space, whether you want a background grid visible and whether you want devices to snap to location uh, as we often do within uh, drawing packages, for example. Again, these are all things which you will uh, get to grips with as you spend more time using the software and give you more idea of which options you want to have working. Next, we have calculation parameters. Here you can select what resolution you want um, to produce in your plots. Uh, the settings you can see here are how I have mine. So standard AS2 broadband pink noise. I keep my resolution high. Now this means it takes a little bit longer to produce the finished maps, but they are more accurate and to a higher resolution. Also, of course, if you have a slower computer, it will take even longer. So you may want to select a lower resolution. Uh, also, how you want your sound pressure summation to work, if you want it full bandwidth or just across, for example, your sub frequencies, uh, if you're working on a sub project, which will make the calculations quicker. This is how I tend to leave mine. This gives me the results that I want in the software. The next four screens allow you to set up the scaling for uh, uh, mapping of levels, frequency, arrival times, all that kind of thing. So uh, you can leave these in an automatic mode or you can set them to window the data to the uh, to useful information within your project. The environment screen, the last one, um, allows you to set your language. Also, whether your units are preferred units are metric or imperial, so feet, inches and Fahrenheit, as opposed to meters and degrees centigrade. Gain grouping is useful, especially when you're building clusters, because it allows you to turn the level of the entire cluster up and down whilst keeping relative levels different within the cluster for each individual loudspeaker. Functionality mode, uh, you get a bit of extra stuff going on within Ease Focus if you use the extended mode. For example, I keep it in extended mode, so I've got one third octave mapping. Um, the standard model will only allow uh, a maximum resolution of octave by octave. So our workspace when you open Ease Focus is going to look something like this. It's the default workspace for Ease Focus. All of the windows can be uh, moved out, extended, uh, shrunk, tabbed around, all the standard Windows functionality. You can also store preferred um, configurations within the software. And you can reset the defaults if required. Word of warning though, if you use the reset defaults function, make sure you've saved your file first because uh, the way it resets the defaults is by closing the software and reopening it. So if you've got data that you haven't saved in there, you will lose it as part of that process. So at the top of the screen, we have our um, overhead or plan view of our space. And when you open uh, Ease Focus to start with, it defaults this rectangular audience area you can see in the center of the screen. Below that is the side view window. This also becomes our data view window. Once we've got more audience planes and some loudspeakers in there, this is where things like our frequency response graphs and statistical data will appear, and it will all be tabbed across the top. On the left-hand side, the project and object properties window. So this, to start with, gives you uh, details of the project itself, the name, file locations, that kind of thing. But as you go through and start adding things into your project, uh, each object's data, each loudspeaker, and each audience area 
their individual data appears in this window here to the left hand side. Let's take a look at the workspace toolbar. Highlighted in the top left there, so this is right across the top of your workspace within EaseFocus, you'll see we've highlighted the show mapping. Now you can turn show mapping on or off. I would suggest that while you're building your model, adding workspaces and adding loudspeakers, you leave show mapping switched off. Otherwise, it will continually try to uh, plot the response across your audience area, which can look very confusing and get somewhat in the way when you're trying to add more loudspeakers into a room. So I leave show mapping off until I'm ready to look at the first plots when I turn it back on again. Next, the type menu selects what parameters you want to map, whether it's direct uh, sound without weighting or direct sound A weighted, or you can look at signal to noise ratio mapping. Now, as I said before, it's all direct sound. There is no room acoustics taken into account within uh, Ease Focus. It is a basic direct sound model only. Frequency and, uh, and the bandwidth keys allow us to look at uh, which individual frequencies we want to plot on our model. That can be third octave sensors, one octave, three octaves, or broadband. Now the bandwidth um, drop down menu back references to both frequency column and the type column. So for example, when you've selected broadband, it back references to what you've selected under type, be that direct SPL, A or unweighted. When you select, um, for example, one octave band from that list, your bunch of frequencies that are available in the previous column, the, column, the frequency column, will only be octave centers rather than third octave centers. The relative map allows you to map relative levels um, within a up to plus minus one dB resolution as opposed to an absolute level. Sources menu allows you to select which loudspeakers are active uh, and areas allows you to select which audience areas are active. Both of those windows also allowed you to build groups as you will see of loudspeakers or audience areas and toggle them on or off. Okay, so the first thing we have to do is create a project. To do that, we give the project a title and uh, we set our basic parameters. So um, our ear height, air pressure, uh, temperature, all that stuff, I tend to leave those as defaults. Clicking on the project settings button allows you to edit listener ear height and set upper and lower height limits of the room for the project. And noise settings allows you to set a noise floor for the project. So once we've got that done, uh, we can see we have our top view and that's all we're going to see on the screen at this point. Once you click on that, its parameters appear on the left hand side. Now you can choose to edit this rectangular space or you can remove it and you can add any space that you like, uh, any shape of space you like using these buttons here in the top left hand corner of the workspace. So what we've done here is we've added an angular workspace by clicking on this area button here. And once it's in the workspace, we can add and edit its parameters. So we can give it a label, like for example, here we have ground floor. We can change its orientation, i.e. which way it's facing, reference to the horizontal axis on the screen. We can look at the audience, the audience area depth front to back. We can look at the inner radius, that's this part here, and the sweep hand angle. So the, uh, the, the overall um, number of degrees you have from left to right. So this is a 90 degree, 180 would give you semicircular, 360 would give you a full circle and so on. You can then add audience areas to this space. You can see here we have two, they're the darker gray regions, and we can define um, the relative sizes of each of those within our ground floor space. So again, you can see here we have length, um, what the ear height is, all the parameters you need to adjust to get the audience shaping right for your application, including height. So for example, here in our second area, C to D, you can see C to D here. 
we can define not just our distance, but also our height. So here by point D being 4.2 meters above ground level, we now have a raked seating area to the rear of our space. So within Ease Focus, you have this curious little arrow. Now it does strange things. There are one or two little um, oddities in, in, in uh, Ease Focus, which no one seems to quite know what they do. And one of them is this arrow. So it should by default always point towards the sound source. So towards the left of the screen. You can change this within the properties of the audience area for certain audience shapes. Not quite sure what the defining uh, what the defining um, factor is for that, but it seems that square and rectangular shapes you can turn that round, but you can't in anything which has uh, non-parallel sides. But that basically indicates which direction your audience are facing. Next thing we do is we need to add some loudspeakers. So we do that with this little tab, which again uh, is at the top of your main workspace. Click on there and this menu comes up. So in your left hand side in this screen here will be your library of all the loudspeaker manufacturers that you've added into uh, your library. When you click on that manufacturer on the right hand side, you will get the list of the loudspeaker systems that are available within that library. And clicking on the left and right arrows allows you to navigate your way through the list. You then click on the loudspeaker that you want to use, click OK, and that is then ready to be dropped into your audience space model. OK, so once our loudspeakers are in there, you'll see I've actually added two CDD12s in this example. You can label the loudspeakers. Now, it's quite important to give them a, uh, an understandable label because with multiple loudspeakers within a model, it's always good to be able to quickly access and understand which loudspeaker is doing what. You can fine tune its location after you've uh, roughly dropped it into place. So for you can do that for um, both X, left to right, Y, up to down axis, and also the height of the loudspeaker. You can change its vertical tilt. So this is the up tilt or down tilt in this case, the loudspeaker cabinet. It's horizontal pan left to right and any rotation of the box. With the CDD, it's important to note that rather than doing that, you need to select either the portrait or landscape version of the loudspeaker because that way you get the dis correct dispersion pattern in the model. Of course, being differential dispersion or with an asymmetric dispersion pattern, that's quite important. You can also uh, add delay and change the relative gain of each cabinet uh, in the model in this screen. OK, so in this model, I now have my two CDD 12. So I've also got uh, three CDD 10 loudspeakers on delay and three cardioid 18 inch subs. The SXC118 as low end reinforcement. This is why you need to be careful about labeling each loudspeaker because especially once you get into larger distributed systems, there's a lot of loudspeakers in there. You want to be able to access parameters for each easily, knowing which one's doing what. But you can also add these speakers in groups. So for example, mains, delays, subs. You do that by going into the sources menu, as you can see here, and select just the loudspeakers that you want to have delayed. So by default, to start with, all the loudspeakers will be on. You just click through and turn off the ones you don't want in your group. They will then show that they're inactive by this um, black no entry sign, if you like the circle with the line through it. Once we have the, the particular loudspeakers we want in our group selected, we click manage groups, store selected sound sources as a group, give the group a name, and they will then appear in the menu as a group of loudspeakers, which you can turn on or off together. As you can see here, we have a group for delays, main left, right, and a group for our subwoofers. This is very useful for quickly being able to look at uh, any interactions that are being caused by having multiple loudspeakers on at once, or just wanting to look at coverage directly from your mains, or for example, purely from your subs, as you can see in the model here. 
So when a sound source is selected, you need to be aware of um, its bandpass filter. So these will appear as filter settings in the bottom window of the screen. So where the side view starts from. When you click on one of your loudspeaker sources, the filter tab becomes available. By default, there are no filters in there. So for example, um, when you're adding subwoofers, you will want to change your low pass uh, and high pass settings. So for example, your low pass here, you would put um, whatever your crossover point is going to be, which clearly wouldn't be 16K. Add the filter type that you're going to use and switch off the bypass. You can see that by default, the high pass and low pass filters are in bypass mode. With a full range speaker, you'll want to add your high pass, you may want to add your high pass filter. So for example, here with the CDD12, you can see I've put a high pass filter in at 90 Hertz. Ease focus is particularly useful um, for low frequency system design. When we look at um, our upper range speakers, be they full range, mid high boxes, what have you, um, certainly through the upper mid range, uh, say at 4K, for example, we'll be able to see the current filtering and interference patterns between the boxes. We may not be able to do anything about that. We may be limited by our uh, building or layout structure or architect's requirements. But for example, we can minimize that to an extent by moving speakers, you know, um, expanding clusters, that kind of thing. But in low frequency system design, there's an awful lot we can do to improve coverage through the room uh, by moving the cabinets and putting them in better locations. This is all to do with the wavelength of sound coming from the loudspeakers and the way that interacts between the boxes. So what we're looking at here is a couple of slides which are, are unashamedly stolen from Simon Purse, my colleague's excellent subwoofer. Um, webinar, which is also available in the training session on the website. Um, and we're looking at the interaction between two subwoofers in a typical uh, often used arrangement. That's two subs separated by about the width of a stage. So here we're looking at about nine and a half meters apart and we're looking at 31 and a half hertz. Now the colored mapping you're seeing in the background, that is what we get from Ease Focus. The circles are overlaid, um, so that's not part of the Ease Focus software. So you can see what's happening uh, and why we're getting this uh, strong power tunnel effect or power alley. We've all heard it, we all know it exists. This is what happens when you have a left right sub arrangement, you stand in front of it, you get this strong projection out to the front, and you get these cancellations off to the side. Briefly, this is caused because we have a different arrival time from the two subwoofers. So when you're standing here, you have a shorter arrival time from this one and that one, which means the two are going to be out of phase with each other within these regions. Um, this needs to, if you need to know more detail about this, I say do have a look at Simon's excellent webinar. So out of here, they're effectively out of phase, so they're subtracting from each other, but here they're all in phase and adding up nicely. You can see that from the concentric rings. So where the rings cross, uh, out of phase and that causes the cancellation. Very typical arrangement and this is the kind of thing you will see when you have left right sub arrangements within your design. If you can put those two subs together then we get a very different picture indeed. Everything is summing up nicely because the two are close together there's not enough difference in arrival times of the two wavelengths to make any significant cancellations. So you end up with a much more coherent, much more even frequency response throughout your venue. And this is what Ease Focus is really good for. It's showing you exactly what kind of interactions you're going to get between your subwoofers to enable you to get better planning and convince your customer that actually you do really want to put the subwoofers there and it would be really worthwhile them moving that seating. Okay, so something you need to know is that all our subwoofers, um, all the measurement data that's within Ease Focus works on the basis of them being placed on the floor. That means you will get uh, argu arguably 6 dB more level when they're placed on a flat floor from an individual sub than you will if you fly them in the air because the sub is having to radiate in all directions when it's flown 
whereas when it's sitting on the floor it's only radiating into half the spherical space now there's a lot of discussion about this at the moment and lots of people are going out and doing measurements because in the real world it seems that this isn't quite what happens and it's something to do with the listener being in half space now you don't still get the full level you do get some attenuation when arrays are flown but it's not as much as 6 db however we're still recommending that you consider it to be 6 db for the moment so that you get a worst case scenario so we're looking here as a model of a cardioid flown array so you can see that by using a, a, a cardioid array we get significant attenuation to the rear of the array this is very useful at keeping low frequency energy off our stage but projecting it forward into our audience space as you can see from the plots here so this is looking at a side view uh, of a sub placed into an audience space you can also use ease focus to plot your sub arrays for large festival sites now a very common um, array style that is used on outdoor festival sites and come to that in arenas as well is the broadside array i.e building a long array of subwoofers across the front of a stage you can do that very simply in ease focus by when you import your subwoofers you can say that you are building a subwoofer array you can see the button highlighted here within this green circle simply ticking that subwoofer array box gives you additional options within the object properties window for that subwoofer when you get it into the model double clicking my screen doesn't help so what you end up with by using subarrays is a method of controlling your broadside array when you have multiple subs together side by side they effectively become a sideways on line array and they are long enough in a large space to actually start having directional control so you start building up again this power alley which projects sound directly in front of the um, subwoofer array but you start losing levels off to the sides now on a festival site when you've got a very wide audience space this is not what you need so you need to start steering that low frequency energy out to the sides again this is covered in size uh, excellent webinar but within ease focus you can tell um, the software once you're told you have a sub array how many boxes you've got in that array how high they are stacked what the array total width is and what the spacing is between the arrays also what coverage angle you want in degrees from that total array. The software will then give you the delay times for each of those subs and automatically drop them into place. Now you can do this manually yourself. So you can drop them in conventionally box by box as you would if you weren't building an array and import your own values for this. So for example, we publish a subwoofer calculator. The link for it you can see here. Um, it's readily available to download from the support section of the website. And we found that even modeling at Ease Focus, our own calculations from this spreadsheet work better than the ones that Ease Focus gives you. But rather than importing as a subwoofer array, you need to import those then as individual boxes, put them side by side, and add the parameters to each individual box that the subwoofer calculator will give you. That's what the calculator looks like. You can see a little bit of a screenshot there for it for the SX series of subs. If you want to learn more about how this works and some alternative types of sub array design, uh, then you can use the webinar as detailed in the training section on our website. So within Ease Focus, you can also add a section plane. This then allows you to look at, um, for example, SPL drop off or frequency response change across an individual section plane. They're drawn in freehand, uh, but you can also edit the parameters in the usual window off to the left hand side. This gives you then um, some extra sections through a venue. So, for example, your side on view conventionally in Ease Focus will just go left to right through your x-axis this allows you to look at other axes through your audience space 
You can also add receiver locations. These are virtual microphone points where you can look at individual frequency responses. You can see we have one placed here, number one and number two. You can then look at the relative frequency responses between the two. This option appears as frequency responses in your data window again at the bottom. And once you have your receiver points in place, you can look at the frequency response in each of those locations, get good comparisons, and it also allows you to see interactions between um, multiple subwoofers and see what change in frequency response you're getting through the room. So as I mentioned earlier, um, your, your uh, x-axis view, your side view is always going to be through this section of the model. What you can see then, for example, is you can start looking at the uh, frequency response attenuation. So for example, we are looking here at receiver one. So we're looking at an, uh, a cut through the x-axis from receiver one onwards through that space. And we can see through that cut plane, our SPL drop off for audience plane one and audience plane two through the distances of each of those audience planes. You can look at individual arrival times in each of those locations as well at each receiver from each source. So we're looking at arrival times from each of the loudspeakers, our main left and right, our delay loudspeakers, and from our subs. And we can look at sublocation, we can look at receiver location one or two. That gives us an initial window, an initial way of looking at our time alignment requirements, so that when we get to site, we have a starting point from which we can set our delay times. Obviously, listening and measurement are the preferred methods once you get to site, but it does give you a ballpark starting point to get your system sounding roughly as it should do. Another way to look at uh, each of your receivers or come to that any of your individual sources, rather than just by clicking on them within your workspace, is to go to the object list. The show object list button appears in the left hand side window where all your other object properties are. Click on it, gives you a list of all your devices. As you click on each device within that list, they'll be highlighted in your main workspace so you can back reference and see which particular area or which loudspeaker you're looking at. And also then going from object list to object properties, once you've highlighted and selected one of those items, it will bring the parameters up for that loudspeaker in your sidebar. You can also import venue plans. Um, I find this very useful. I've just been doing this myself for a particular project. You can import, for example, a floor plan of a building. Um, this needs to be as a JPEG or PNG format. So if it's a, a DWG or PDF uh, drawing that you're working from, you will need to take a screenshot or uh, a save and export and one of those formats so that you can import it into these focus. But it then allows you to put your audience areas on top of the map so you can actually give it some real reference points so that your customer can see exactly what they're getting in each area of their building in a very recognizable format. It also then allows you, for example, to put um, individual um, reference points at each seat so you can look at frequency response at each seat within a building or sample seats within a building. Obviously, as you import it, you're going to need um, to tell Ease the correct dimensions of the room. So you need some idea of the scale of the space. So uh, take a dimension which you know or you've measured from your DWG model and you start that with point A to point B. So those are your known distances and you add that as your line length within Ease Focus. So if you know, for example, that that happens to be 26 meters, you add it within that window and then Ease is scale, scales your map to its workspace. Once it's imported, you can overlay your audience areas, as you can see here. So you can then build up your audience space, as we've done here with a rectangle, a couple of quadrants and square sections. We have our loudspeakers in here, and we can now map 
directly onto our audience area and look at our SPL mapping, our profiles and everything through a real audience. Great visual tool for enabling you and your customers to understand exactly what is going on. And of course, you can add section planes, all that kind of stuff in exactly the same way as you normally would have done. It's simply providing a background behind your model so that it gives it some real world reference. So mapping is probably the most presentable tool. It's the one that's the easiest for people to see and understand what's going on. We generally in project work map uh, a direct broadband sound pressure level, A weighted or Z weighted, depending on requirement, and a uh, one octave plot at 4K. This is useful as it gives you a good idea of what kind of intelligibility you're going to get uh, through the region. As I said before, do bear in mind, this is all direct sound only. You cannot take room acoustics into account. You need a far more complex piece of software to do that. But it does at least give you an idea of what kind of coverage and maximum SPL you're going to get through your space. Within the mapping, you can also do some statistical analysis. So this is one of the functions that appears in the tabs in the bottom section um, of your workspace, side view would be to start with. And for example, we generally tend to look for um, uh, an SPL and frequency response range that's plus or minus 3 dB across an audience area. We can look at that statistically and see how far close we are to that or how far away we are from it. So here, for example, we can see that we've set a class width of 6 dB so that's plus three minus three. Our class width is a total of six dB. And we can see that 98% of our audience is sitting nicely at 102 dB. So that's a good consistent level throughout our audience space um, with a little drop off either side, the front and back of the audience region. If our map is showing us answers we don't want to see, then what do we do about it? What's our process? Well, we need to start thinking about where our problems lie. So, for example, if we're looking at a four kilohertz map and we're seeing a lot of comb filtering, is there a way you can rearrange the speakers to minimize it? So, for example, if you have a cluster of three speakers in the center um, above a proscenium arch in a, a theatre, can you explode that cluster? Can you move the two outer cabinets further apart so that they are interfering less significantly with the centre loudspeaker and still get the coverage that you need? If you have quiet areas within a space, is there the opportunity to add extra loudspeakers? So you may want to add, for example, um, some delay loudspeakers at the rear of a room if you're getting too much level drop off towards the back of the space. You can also see if you've got a center of origin that uh, you want to delay your speakers back to. So that could be the center of a stage. You can then delay all your speakers within the model um, so that you can see that they start to add up constructively within the space rather than destructively and to start getting your arrival times correct. You can also examine things like, for example, the dispersion of your loudspeaker. Is it correct? Is it wide enough or is it too wide? You're getting too much spill outside of your audience area. Maybe you need to look at changing your loudspeaker model to something with narrower dispersion. So the whole bunch of tools which we can use and decisions we can make based on the plots which EaseFocus gives us. Now, EaseFocus will produce a complete report for you. You can select what data you want in that report and you can print out a nice report which you can give to your customer. You can also individually select to export um, certain data. So, for example, your frequency response graphs, uh, your statistical data, your side views or your top views can be exported as individual maps or pictures as well for you to integrate into your own presentations on your own letterheads, that kind of thing. So there's a whole bunch of information there which you can glean from EaseFocus to help you design your systems and also to give you a nice presentation package to your customers.